Let's dive further into our VFX options. The keyboard splitter is the next. Hi. The main purpose of the VFX keyboard splitter is, as the name already suggests, to be able to split up the keyboard range to separate regions, which can be used by different instruments. This can be especially handy for a keyboard player to play live rhythms or chords with the left hand, while playing a melody with different instruments with the right hand. In the channel rack, we always had the possibility to change the root key and thus the transposition by right-clicking the wished note in the miscellaneous tab of generators. Furthermore, we always could already limit the key range of the instrument. As long as the whole range was selected by default, a single left-click on the upper part above a key is enough to limit the key range to it. Left click above a different key extends the range to it. Left drag in this area to continuously change the range. Control left click to always limit the range to a single key. Alt left click to set it back to the full range. In Patcher though, neither native nor third party plugins got a miscellaneous tab available. Here the keyboard splitter overtakes this job. I got here Flex playing some strings. And a Harmo with an arpeggio. The plugin contains 16 zones which sending the signal to the 16 corresponding outputs. We have an envelope section for doing keyboard splits with a transpose slider and a mysterious random switch to which we will come later on. Second, there's a velocity tab. I have set here a shaker starting with low velocity raising to the end. Changing the envelope sounds like this. The sound starts quiet because of its low velocity from the piano roll. Gets a bit louder, but to the end quieter again because of the envelope setting. The absolute switch ignores the incoming velocity and outputs to what the envelope is set to. I can inverse the behavior we had before to start loud and getting quieter. Or set it to whatever shape I like. Great for creating a bit of a groove. We have got our common menu with all the tools available. And of course, undo. The easiest way to do keyboard splits and to explore how these are intended to be created is manual mapping. I hit here C4, C5 and C6 as my split points. But you can do as much as you like. After going out of this mode, the final envelope to complete the whole keyboard range is done. These are my splits on zone 1 to 4. 
Let's go to the first zone and have a look what happened. We can use our mouse wheel to zoom in. There was a point created on the border of A sharp 3 and B3 on the top. And a point on the bottom between B3 and C4, which was a key I have pressed to insert the first split. The points on zone 2 were set to the opposite way to create a crossfade. The next crossfade was created from B4 to C5, which was the second key I have pressed. And the next between B5 and C6, the last key I have pressed, before I went out of manual mapping mode. Please create your splits always to maximum this steepness and stay away from the curve type hold, as too steep curves might lead to some unexpected behavior. In this example, I have now four zones active, which I can route to plugins, with the outputs 1 to 4 of the keyboard splitter. Playing notes below C4, my strings, which are connected to output 1, are making noise. It's perhaps a bit low in pitch, so I can transpose just the strings one octave up. Starting from C4, I can trigger my hammer with its arpeggio preset. It's again a bit low. Of course, I can play now both instruments together. Starting with C5, where my next split point is set to, I don't hear any sound anymore, as now the notes are sent to output 3, which isn't connected to any instrument yet. But you get the idea. I can of course use new instruments or do less splits. The classic split point for a keyboard player would be the middle C. Having FL Studio type envelopes for creating keyboard splits gives you now a whole lot of flexibility. You could do now a slowed fade between two instruments. Or having one played full while the other slowly gets louder. Or something even more crazy. This will sometimes make sense, other times perhaps not. But feel free to experiment. Beside its main purpose of keyboard and velocity splits, there's a really nice option. Random. For this function to work, you have to involve at least two zones. So let's set this up. I inserted here an FBC holding a hi-hat, which get triggered by 16 notes. I set the keyboard envelope on zone 1 and 2 to full range and activate random on both. Please don't get confused. The manual says random. When used, the probability of a layer working will depend on the velocity envelope. This doesn't mean the envelope of the velocity tab. This means the height or amplitude of the envelope here in the keyboard tab, which changes the volume by changing the velocity. To compensate for that, I inserted a VFX level scaler and set its offset to maximum to have always the full level of my hi-hat. As already said, by changing the amplitude of the envelopes of the two zones, you set the probability. 
how big is the chance that this zone gets played compared to the other. Lower amplitude on zone 2, which is routed to nothing, and higher amplitude on zone 1, which is routed to my hi-hat, let my hi-hat play more often. The more I lower the amplitude on zone 1, the less it gets the chance to be played. Setting both envelopes to the same amplitude gives me a chance of 50%. Probability is a great way to randomly create more variety. I prepare my patcher for the burn MIDI feature. Now, with pattern 1 selected, I can do multiple renders. Make my pattern a bit longer. Select parts that I like and can modify it even more. This can now work all in combination too. Let's say I got here a trap style hi hat line and want some probability on just a part of the notes. I select the odds, change the selection to my liking with holding shift and control plus left click or drag. I change the note color to number 5 and hit Alt C. I insert a color mapper into my patcher and change my routing. On each loop I get a different random seed, which notes are played and which not, only from the blue colored notes. I extend again my pattern and do again my burn MIDI to new pattern. What about this? I have here a little pad playing. But I want to have it a bit more variation over time. I insert a bunch of notes which are in scale above. I don't play this now, this would sound awful. I prepared my keyboard splitter with a split point of D6 which is a point where the additional notes start, and set both to random. These settings now let the original chords as they were before playing normal and all the time, but on the additional higher notes, I just want them to play randomly here and then. Each time the chord is triggered, on a random chance, higher notes get played or not, but not all together, and not always the same.
When we extend this pattern and burn it to MIDI, you can see the new distribution. This doesn't mean random choices spit out just great stuff. But from here on, you can start to take out the great bits and edit them further to your liking. I don't have much use for classic keyboard splitting in my music, but the VFX Keyboard Splitter is absolutely great to create random variation and make everything more alive. Until next time, thank you for watching.